Let's talk about Marico. That's the one which is seen one of the biggest moves that it has seen in today on the back of good numbers coming in. But more importantly, the management commentary was positive as well. In fact, this morning itself, I spoke to Sogata Gupta, who's uh, the managing director, CEO, to discuss in detail the fourth quarter earnings. Spoke to him about whether there are signs of demand improvement on the ground and the outlook for the next few quarters. Listen in. Look at the entire last year. I think there were two factors that played in. While uh, the premium part of the portfolio and the in around, all this across the sector continued to grow, I think we had a lot of stress on rural. Having said that, I think as we you know com completed quarter four towards the end of quarter four, we saw some green shoots and some uptick in rural consumption. Secondly, I think a lot of impact happened because of price deflation in our business. And there was also an impact of shrinkflation in some of our portfolio. So I think the anniversarization of that has gone I mean, will some, some time in quarter one. That will be the anniversarization of most of it. And also, I think, uh, as you know, that we are seeing some trends in inflation, which has uh, led to some pricing calls, which we have taken in the parachute. So overall, if I believe that I think we are much better placed to deliver double-digit revenue growth uh, next year, we also did a lot of correction in our you know, food business. Our digital business continues to do well. We are pretty confident that part of the business, which we call the diversified business, should be able to deliver 20% growth. So as if you look into, take into account all this and the fact that international business continues to be stable in terms of delivering 10% constant currency growth, I think we see the visibility of double-digit revenue growth next year. Double-digit revenue growth next year is something that the street would like, and increasingly we are hearing this from other players as well. Shagata, you know, if you could split that double-digit revenue growth into how much will come from volumes, if there would be any sort of price increase, if at all, you know, the oil prices are now stabilizing, you are seeing some bit of price hikes in parachute, etc. as well. So what would be the element of volume and price in this double-digit revenue growth? It's very difficult at this stage to talk about it. Having said that, I think... Uh... We have taken a 6% uh, price increase in parachute. I don't see any uh, price increases in the other part of the portfolio. Significant price increases, there could be a minor price increase unless there's something happens with the crude because of geopolitical factors. But having said that, that this year at least, you will have a, unlike last year, which had significant deflation, for example, in a portfolio like Sofola, we had minus 20%, you know, uh, price, uh, this one drops, which we had taken. So I think uh, if you look at it, there would be rather some inflation component or pricing component of it. Some will also come through the mix because we believe the premiumization will continue to take place in our portfolio. All right. What about margins then? Because uh, raw material prices are benign. You've increased your ad spends, I presume, there you know, closer to your comfort levels now in terms of the amount that you wanted to spend. So your thoughts on how much more would you spend on ads and margins? So I think uh, we, uh, even last year when we had volume pressure, we continued to invest behind the brands. Having said that, I think we have put in place significant uh, cost uh, improvement measures. Also, as far as advertising is concerned, we started uh, Sofola Master Brand Advertising, which will have significant amortization advantages as far as food business is concerned on the NP spend. So I think the NP spends at the current level should be okay for us. So as far as margin is concerned, uh, yes, there are some inflationary trends. And if we de deliver double-digit revenue growth, I think the margin should grow in line with that. All right, margins would grow in line with that. Now, you know, the street likes the diversification plan that you've made, but we just wanted a couple of numbers for bookkeeping. What was your annual revenue coming in from the foods business in FY24? How close was that to your target of 500 crores? And you expect it to double by FY27. At that level, what would the margins of that business be? Food business in the last four years have gone forex, okay? And uh, I think that uh, we fell a little short of our aspiration uh, which we had in FY20, but it has gone forex. The organic part of the business is growing well. I think the biggest thing that has done in foods is that we have got an 800 bips margin expansion in foods this year because this year was a reset year for foods in terms of margin, uh, where we did a lot of, and most of the things were at the back end and pricing. And of course, uh, better supply chain and better forecasting because I think uh, stock freshness and uh, forecasting is a big thing as far as food is concerned. So now we are well positioned in terms of growing food at a margin which is acceptable to us. The way to look at it is that the diversified part of the business will continue to deliver margins in line with our core portfolio. And uh, we believe that uh, 
For example, both food and digital will continue to improve the profitability as we scale up in the next three to five years. Digital as well, you have targets of double digit margins by FY27. Do we see them at least breaking even in FY25 with some positive margins in FY26? Already, I think one of the brands is broken even, I think Beardo. And uh, we believe that uh, the digital business sh should be in a position to break even. I think we have. Uh, we are now getting scale in some of our brands and therefore, and also I think we now have a playbook having had four to five digital businesses under the, you know, the digital business umbrella. So I see uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't break even. Right. Now let's talk about uh, the underperformer of your portfolio, which is value added hair oils. That was weak because of the weakness in consumer sentiment and all the other things that you can attribute that weakness to. Has there seen some sort of improvement there? I mean, what can we expect in this year from that part of your portfolio? There are two components of that portfolio. The first one, obviously, the bottom-up pyramid where there is significant competitive intensity. And we are a, uh, we have a majority share, so we have to defend that share. Having said that, I think we have a far lower share in the you know mass premium and a premium part of the portfolio where we need to play a much bigger role and uh, what has been happening at least starting quarter four we are seeing some growth in that part of the portfolio and also we will significantly invest to gain share in that part of the portfolio so i think overall i believe that uh, value added hair oils will deliver a better performance and the other thing that uh, will happen is the anniversarization of the shrinkflation that happened will somewhere some sometime in quarter one will also anniversary Right. So that will also help in terms of getting the value growth. I think in value added hair oils, we are focusing on more on value growth than volume growth because the, we are focusing on gaining value share and premiumizing and participating much more strongly in the premium part of the category. This distribution plan that you've made to increase it from one million to a million and a half, uh, that's direct reach. What does that do to your overall revenue projections, your business projections in terms of performance by, uh, you know, once it settles? I think uh, just to give a perspective, I think, uh, as you know, during COVID, obviously, uh, a lot of distribution instability happened uh, in terms of especially at the rural end. And uh, I think what perhaps, and also we got focused in our diversification journey, including digital, and therefore, we didn't see significant expansion in distribution between 2021 and 24. Uh, we strongly believe that for uh, players like us who have a significant part of the mass portfolio, direct distribution is going to be a source of competitive advantage, especially in rural, given the fact there are other uh, pressures in urban where there's a lot of uh, you know churn happening in the distribution system. So two things will happen. I think we are going to focus on far more direct distribution. Direct distribution leads to far better quality of sale. It leads to also far better range selling because as you know, the if you depend on the wholesale channel, the wholesale channel keeps limited SKUs and SKUs very high velocity. So if you are a leader brand, it's very easy to depend on the wholesale channel. But as you have a range, and especially for challenger brands, I think you need the you know, the, you need the direct distribution. Our direct, indirect to direct ratio was very high. And uh, we believe that uh, when we do 1.5, from 1 to 1.5 million in the next three years, I think we will be at par in the top quartile in the industry. And that is the aspiration. Okay, stock is higher and uh, the street probably likes the commentary as well. That's the management of Marico. We need to take a short break, but on the other side, we.